hello everyone uh, welcome back to my channel uh, in this video i am going to explain you uh, what is the what is the project like uh, what are the features uh, in our project and what you are going to learn why uh, in this video and uh, i will upload the upload two video in uh, in the first video i am going to explain you about the back end part and the next video will be going to be in uh, front end part so let me i uh, explain you the features like uh first uh, any user can log in log out features we can use the authentication and uh, multiple user can access uh, the website at the same time and user have its own profile section where uh, user can see their details and their uh, up, uh, uploaded blogs and user can update and delete like these are basically a crud operation we are going to use and uh, and in this project we are i am going to explain you like how to connect mongoose with the node js projects and how to connect front end and back end creating any routes get routes and post routes creating the schema and how to how we store how we are going to store the data in our database and uh, creating creating a schema and how we connect to to different schemas such that we can uh, get more details and queries on the database and json web to let us initiate a empty uh, empty file in the vs code editor using npm in it and leave as it is uh, uh, press enter for all the options and um, now let us um, now you see there is a package.json file has been created so inside the dependencies try to let us write all the packages which we are going to use like bcrypt.js and uh, course file uh, course we are going to use when we are connecting the front end back end and try to install all the versions which i am using because there may be chance some of the features might not be work for other version so you can also install the packages like npm install uh, at the rate and the package version so there, there is also one option so after installing let's clear the terminal and uh, and write some of the basic codes in the index.js file such that whether it uh, works properly or not and let us um, add some code in the start script like nodebond.index.js uh, nodebond we are using because whenever we save our file it automatically got uh, refreshed uh, refresh that's why i am using nodebond uh, let us open the postman and create a new collection let us give the name to um, youtube to blogs and create a new request for for testing our uh, app a new route so that we can when we uh, run the slash api which is uh, uh, home route uh, it will it will send some of the data so that it will be uh, we will check properly now let us create a new folder which is src and inside this src folder uh, we uh, we will uh, put all our folders like uh, the code inside this source folder and inside this source folder let us create a db folder and inside this db let us create a mongoose.js uh, folder in mongoose.js folder we are uh, creating uh, we are writing our database code such that it will connect with the uh, node.js application as you can see Uh, for connecting uh, this mo uh, this database we have to require uh, import this uh, this mongoose.js in uh, index.js file such that it uh, connect and now let us create a new folder which is known as model such that uh, in this model we are going to store the schema of our uh, uh, database first let us create the store.js and let us uh, uh, import the mongoose because we are going to use this the we are going to use the mongoose such that we can create the schema and models for our uh, uh, project so 
so inside this schema we are writing uh, uh, we are taking name price uh, authors and uh, and the other uh, and the details as well and uh, and i set the property to type strings and uh, required uh, required true for uh, some of the for some of the fields and for the authentic uh, for the validation we are uh, doing the validation in the front end part when we are uh, making the front end so don't worry about that uh, please correct the name which is uh, at the line number 29 uh, i mistyped So let us uh, uh, import this store in the index.js file. Now let us uh, create the home route. And we are uh, uh, we are sending all the data which uh, which is uh, stored by the users so that it, it is going to be our home page home page route So now let us create uh, another route app dot post. It is going to be a post route, and uh, this route we are creating for adding the product. So that's why it is a uh, <coughs> post route because we are sending the data from the front end. And using the new new store, uh, it creates the instance of that uh, schema. we are using app dot use uh, express dot json because uh, because we are sending the data from the front end uh, in the json format that's why we are using uh, <coughs> express dot json because if you are not using this uh, you you cannot able to access uh, the data which you are sending from the front end so that's why we are using So now our add product route has been completed. So the error is uh, it sent typo module dot exports. So now let us move to the Postman and create a new route for the for testing our add product uh, route. So now passing the data in the JSON format, you can select via uh, raw and select the drawdown to the JSON. So now you can see we are good to go. You can also check uh, via terminal in the MongoDB database uh, using uh, using these commands like when you enter show DBS, it will uh, show all the data database which you uh, which has been created in your local. Uh, let us create a one more route for deleting our product. It also going to be the post route because we are passing the ID from the front end. And this is also going to be a asynchronous function. Instead of try and catch, you can also use the uh, then and catch then and catch method. X 
accessing the ID from the front end, we are using request.body.id so that we can get the ID. So now we are using a query uh, which is uh, find by ID and uh, and delete. It returned the promise, that's why we are using the await keyword. So now let us move to the postman and check whether it is working or not. So let's create a new route for <coughs> for deleting. Uh, first let us create a one more thing uh, because we only have one data in our database. So now we have added one more product and let us create a new route for the deleting so i copied the id of that product so let us see whether it is a delete or not again doing the same thing like selecting the row and from the drop down select the json and pass that id Oh, please make the changes like that ID which uh, I forget to pass the underscore. So you can see it is successfully deleted. So if I again send the request to the home route, you can see there is only one data is left. So it is working fine. So now let us create one more route for, for updating the product. Uh, it is also going to be the post route because we are passing the data such that like uh, which of the data we want to update and we are passing an extra parameter in the url uh, which is an id so that we can hand uh, we can select that uh, product by using that id now this time our id is present in the url so that's why we are uh, uh, here i am we are not we are using request.params.id to access the parameter and now using um, the, the query uh, first we are uh, accessing the uh, keys of that object which we are sending from the front end because <coughs> first we have to know which uh, which data we want to uh, update so that's why so now it is just a uh, simple for each loop for saving that item we are using uh, item.save method and and pass the message successful message such that we can know whether it is updated or not So let us move to the postman and check uh, whether it is working or not. And again now again create a new route for updating. Here I am passing the <coughs> uh, updating the name. So that's why I am passing name. So if I again hit the home route you can see the name has been updated with that particular ID so it is also work fine you can check it by yourself as well like uh, passing the other data as well whether it is updated or not so now let us create one more route because because you can see as our uh, code uh, as our as the the index.js file is uh, getting longer so let us move the 
route uh, route file in a separate uh, other files so i created a new folder which is name is router inside the source and inside this routers i create a product.js file and uh, and let us uh, import the express and one more thing when you <coughs> uh, when uh, when we are creating another other file of the router you uh, in that case you cannot use that app dot get app dot post like this you have to use here router so let us do and don't forget to uh, uh, export this uh, router and also import all the things which we are using in this product uh, in this uh, product or js file like store uh, store schema not schema store models now for using that route you do uh, you only need to just uh, <coughs> import all the uh, import that router you can choose any name like it's totally up to you so i i choose here product router and for using that uh, router in this uh, index.js you use app.use and just uh, insert the name there is a so now let us see uh, you can see our home route is still working so other route uh, also working so now let us create one more models for the for our user uh, create a new file inside the models which is user.js and first import uh, the mongoose and, and create a user schema for storing the data where we can store where we are uh, inserting the user of data like name email all these things you already know these things like how we are creating the schema that's why i uh, speed up this feed uh, this part So now our schema has been uh, done. So now it's time to create the route for our users. So let us create a new file in the inside the routers folder, which is user.js and let us import the uh, express all these things. And also import the router things uh, because we are uh, we also have to export this router that's why so let us start first uh, first of all create the login route so let us extract the email and the body from the request dot body which we are uh, which we are getting in the backend because generally authentication only needs the email and password that is enough to uh, create a login system and i guess before the login we need to create the uh, sign up sign up router because without sign up we cannot make the login so let us move to the sign up route and create the, create this first this is also going to be the asynchronous function because we are saving our data in the database so it will return the promise that's why we are uh, we have to use uh, async uh, asynchronous function
first we have to check whether uh, this uh, user is already have uh, already signed up before or not if that is a uh, user already signed up then we uh, throw a new error like uh, user is already signed up that's why we uh, <coughs> use a if condition if uh, if it already signed up then we will uh, throw a new error and uh, whenever we throw a throw the new error uh, throw new error it uh, directly move to the catch block so and now let us uh, if already uh, if the user is uh, not already signed up so we save that uh, user in our database So now uh, let us export this route and import in our index.js file. So doing the same thing again import uh, <coughs> import that user router in the uh, in index.js and then use app.use and pass that user router inside uh, app.use. So now let us get back to the postman and create a new folder where uh, inside this folder we are storing all the uh, user related routes so that all the so such that the different routes not getting messed up and uh, move all these uh, <coughs> and move all these route uh, in the uh, product and we are we have a user route folder which we, uh, in which we are adding all the user related routes so let us create a sign up uh, sign up route and uh, localhost 4000 sign up and pass the data uh, pass the data in the and hit the request so you can see the we get the response uh, we get the user in our response so now let us try to uh, log in now inside the login there is two Mm -hmm. uh, important feature I am going to explain you like uh, how you can uh, in a how you can uh, add a function to the schema and uh, how to add the function to the instance of that schema so so now here uh, you can see await we are using user user which is our model so we are accessing creating a function on the model and uh, and at the below uh, you can see we are creating a small user which is uh, which is the user not the uh, not the our model so so let us see how we are going to create this uh, function now uh, when we have to create any function on the instance of that schema then in that case we are using the user schema dot uh, methods and uh, now you can able to uh, use this function by using that instance So now let us uh, while uh, whenever a user login so we have to create that token such so that it is uh, easy to uh, check whether any user is authenticated or not. So for that case we are using JWT token and do not forget to import at the top. Uh, so let us first understand how JSON web token is working so, so let us see. So let's create a function uh, first we have to require the JWT such that we can use and we are requiring it from the JSON web token and we also use a bcrypt
and let us create this fun function and let us make some fun with uh, by using jwt and for creating any token we are using the jwt dot sign uh, the first parameter which we are passing you can pass it uh, any object and here we are passing the id just it it's a dummy, dummy id and while implementing in our model we are passing the uh, mongodb id and the second one is a secret key which we have to pass and uh, that secret key should be uh, any uh, whether you can add it your name and whatever you want and you can see in the console we have the json dot uh, we have print that token so this to uh, this token is basically unique whenever you uh, whether whenever how many time you save it doesn't matter it, it always get the unique token so so now for verify that token we are using JW, jwt dot uh, verify uh, in the first step uh, in the first place uh, first parameter we are passing that token and the second one is we are passing that secret key which uh, we have uh, using while uh, while creating the token and uh, and if you change that value of secret key you are see you we are getting that uh, getting error so it is uh, good to use jwt so here we are doing the same thing we are passing the secret key here and set that token to the user model and we save that user and return that token values and now let us create a function for uh, for that schema so that we can access this function by using that uh, model for uh, for uh, for implementing any function on the model we are using the user schema dot statics method and now you can see we can access the uh, dot find by credential So inside this find by credential, we are passing two parameter. Uh, we are getting two argument. Uh, we are getting two values, uh, email and password. And now first we check whether this uh, user is already present in our database or not. Uh, if that uh, user is not present, then it it means uh, it does not uh, logged in. Uh, it does not log in yet. So. So here we check if the user is not here, uh, like if we did not get the user, then we uh, throw the error. So now let us, um, after getting the, if that user is present, then we decrypt the password. So as we, so we also need to learn about how bcrypt is working so so before this uh, uh, before uh, before this uh, making find by credential first we need to uh, create a new method which is user schema dot pre whenever we save uh, our schema uh, this function is triggered before uh, before that uh, the save so we are doing this because uh, because we uh, suppose when we create a user uh, we are saving the password we don't want to save the password as it is so, so that's why we are uh, uh, bcrypt that password that's why we are using and user dot is modified is a mongoose uh, uh, function we check whether it is modified or not that's why uh, we are using user dot is modified and we are passing the parameter is password and here we are using uh, uh, bcrypt dot hash method And let us see like how bcrypt is working like as we see the JWT how JWT was working. So if we get some basic ideas about the JWT. So now it's time to uh, move on bcrypt.js uh, bcrypt.js. So first we have to be, uh, require bcrypt and uh, let us create a new function uh, the fun. Now let us uh, understand how bcrypt is work. So let us first uh, create the hashed value. Like see how hashed values looks like. So we are using the bcrypt dot hash, and in the and the first parameter is our password, and the second one is the salt, which is uh, like the algorithm is runs like number of times. So 
we are uh, passing year 8 you can see in the console we get the big hashed password so by the uh, by using this hash password or if somehow some of some uh, someone get the access of our database so he cannot able to use that uh, uh, user id and password and not able to log in that's why we are using that uh, bcrypt.hash method and for comparing we also have bcrypt.compare in which we are passing the first password and then the second value is our hashed password and and then it returns true and false as you see and now we are getting the true if we change the password and we again save now you can see we are getting the false so it is how it is working so so now let us let's try to implement this in our uh, models file so now uh, in the find by credential method uh, after finding the user we are comparing the password which uh, the first one is the, the password and the second one is the hash password so if you change the order there might uh, it won't work that's why uh, please make sure the order is correct if the, uh, if the password is not matched then we throw a new error like unable to log in and if it is matched then we return that user So now get back to the postman and try to uh, create the user. Now the first of the things let us drop the uh, already saved user because uh, for that users we do not uh, hash the password or be kept the password. So let us drop all the uh, collections. So you can use uh, first show collections it will show the collection and then db dot collection dot drop and it will drop that uh, collection. So this is the way we can do it via terminal you can also use like robot 3 uh, 3t and mongo uh, mongodb compass by doing this and so we forget to import at the top of you uh, in the user.js like jwt and bcrypt so try to import at the top So now let us uh, create a user. Now you can see uh, our password is going to be hashed. And when we again try to uh, save this user, we get the error like uh, already sign up. So you can try it by yourself like it will be uh, more clear to you and let us add one more route for uh, for the login. Now pass the same email data and password email sorry email id and passwords. And in the response of this, um, um, if uh, if it successfully logged in, then we in the response we are getting uh, the uh, the user details and that token. Um, as you can see right now. Now let us create a new route for the uh, for the logout. It is also going to be a post request. Um, 
i think before the logout we need to make a new uh, we we have to create a middleware for authorization uh, for checking whether it is authenticated or not so for that we are create a folder inside a source which is known as authentication and inside this authentication create a auth uh, auth.js and let us first uh, import the jwt and create the user schema as well uh, this middleware will run like uh, this uh, before the before the uh, before it uh, before the request getting triggered it will called just before uh, that request so that's why it is uh, it is calling the middleware and for for authentication we are passing the uh, that token in the header that's why we are uh, accessing the request dot header uh, and passing the authorization if that token is not present then it means uh, uh, it means the user is not auth authenticated so that's why we throw a new error Uh, import that uh, uh, import uh, use that auth in uh, in this file so you just need to pass the auth uh, and there is nothing more uh, you have to pass and don't forget to import at the top and now let us see uh, if we uh, we just only need to set the token to that empty such that the token is not uh, no more and then we check uh, when when we check for this token if that token is not uh, not there so it successfully logged out and then we save that user uh, with empty token So now we just only need to pass the auth in the uh, in the route which we want to make the authentication like adding product, and delete product, and edit product. So for the home route, we are not going to pass any authentication. That's why I removed. So you can see it is going to be very easy when we are passing the middleware. So you just only need to write uh, one thing, and it is uh, handle all the authentication function. And and require the auth at the top
so now let us uh, done all those things via postman and check whether it is working or not so let us first uh, logged in with the user email id and password we get that token and we <coughs> by using that token we can easily uh, if i am not passing this token so so it is saying please authenticate this so it is correct now we are passing that uh, token uh, in the header so authorization and the value should be token that token and when i now again send the request now you can see let us change some of the things like name and author so now you can see how uh, i can successfully able to add the product so you can check other things as well like uh, it will working fine and and in the next video we will i will making the now uh, front end part where we will uh, that will that video will be really uh, going uh, will be the great great so that we can create the uh, front end and then connect the back end so it will going to be a fun so let's meet uh, in that video so bye bye take care and don't forget to like and subscribe so thank you so much